Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace, mercy, and blessings of God Almighty be with you. Welcome to the teachings of Islam, my dear friends. And once again, it's such a pleasure for me to be here with you, continuing to <coughs> expound on different aspects of Islam so that you can have the correct understanding of Islam. You know, I always advise people that they should try and understand Islam before they speak about Islam. So I would like to advise you also, on, unless you took the time out to learn about Islam, you should not judge Muslims nor Islam. Or you should not speak ill of Islam, not understanding uh, the, the history of Islam and the correct teachings of Islam. So it's very, very important that you make some time to, to learn and understand this way of life that is attracting so much of attention presently. As usual, we discuss topics of great interest to you and we answer questions that may, may be asked by members of the public uh, regarding Islam. I always you know, tr like to share you know, my experiences uh, on the island with people who are not Muslims. I, I love sharing you know, my, my experiences in, in interacting with my non-Muslim friends out there simply because it may have been just one person that came forward and had the bravery to ask me a question. But I know for a fact that many of you out there have some of the same questions, but for whatever reason, whatever barriers exist, you know, you find it very hard to come forward and ask such questions. So, you know, I'm going to share with you today some more of my experiences in interacting with the public, in, in interacting with persons, persons out there who are not Muslims, who are trying to understand Islam just like you. So, today we'll deal with uh, a brief background of the Quran. Because a lot of people ask me for, for copies of the Quran, and some of them, you know, they find it very, very interesting when they begin to read uh, the Quran and they're coming across various topics and various uh, questions arise from those topics. So today we are, we are going to deal with the history of the Qur'an and we don't have sufficient time to discuss every aspect of the Qur'an but hopefully we will start to you know, break down some, uh, some of these uh, matters or some of these uh, uh, subject areas of the Qur'an. So today we begin with the word Qur'an. The word Qur'an in itself comes from the word Qara'a, which means to, to read. So the Qur'an essentially is a revelation that, that is to be read. In other words, the, the knowledge and the wisdom within this, this revelation, within this holy scripture, it can only be attained by reading. And this is the reason why the word Qur'an comes from that root, Qara'a, which means to read. A matter of fact, the very, very first verse that was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad and whom be peace of the Qur'an, it was Iqra, which means in Arabic, read. When the angel, angel Jibril or angel Gabriel, the angel that, that was responsible for bringing revelation to, uh, from God Almighty to all the prophets, when he came to the Prophet Muhammad and whom be peace, his, his first meeting with the Prophet Muhammad and whom be peace was that he brought 
that that command or that verse of, of the Holy Quran which says Iqra, read. Now the Prophet Muhammad whom he peace, he was unlettered, meaning that he was never formally taught to read nor write. Now a lot of times people hear this and they're they're so amazed that how can the prophet how can someone be a prophet and he didn't know to read nor write? How could he have taught others if he didn't know to read nor write? So, in order for us to understand the wisdom of God Almighty sending a prophet that was unlettered, that was not formally taught to read nor write, the wisdom of this is that in the time when the prophet Muhammad on whom the peace was sent, it was a time when poetry was very, very prevalent. It was a time when each and every child within the Arabian Peninsula was all about poetry. From the time a child was born, you know, his parents or her parents would try to push that child to learn poetry. That was the style, that was the, the, the in thing, so to say, in that, uh, in, in that time when the Prophet uh, Muhammad Humi peace came. People were extremely eloquent in the Arabic language and in every household you had someone who was, who was composing uh, 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 poems and who was either reading them out in public or writing them. So God Almighty chose a prophet who was unlettered, who was not formally taught to read nor write so that when this message from God Almighty is sent, when the Quran was revealed, people will not accuse the Prophet Muhammad peace of bringing poetry, or people will, people would uh, would have had the 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 the, 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 uh, the ability to say, well, you know, we are poets. And this guy is claiming that he's a prophet, but he's a poet just like us. He is well schooled in poetry, so how can he claim that this is from God Almighty when he is capable of he's capable of, of putting together his own poems? So for that very reason, Allah Almighty chose a prophet who was unlettered. Not illiterate, but who was unlettered. He was not formally taught to read nor write. Just so that the Quran is not accused of, or the Prophet is not accused of producing or bringing his own thoughts and his own words as the word of God. And this is very very important because a lot of people in the past have written their own books claiming that it was the word of God. We have it, you know, it, it's so prevalent even in our time. You know, you find that a lot of times people produce uh, documents and they say, well, this is from God. Or sometimes, you know, you, you're, in, you're in public and you're listening to a speaker and he's saying, you know, God told me this, God told me that. You know, the Quran is very, very uh, precise in, in, in what, what it has to say. That every single word... Every single verse of the Holy Quran, every single chapter of the Holy Quran is not the writings of the Prophet Muhammad to whom be peace, since he could not read nor write. As he re received the revelation from God Almighty, he, he taught it to the people. Now, someone may ask the question, but how, how then the Quran is in a book form? So the Prophet Muhammad to whom be peace, he had scribes. And when the angel would bring the revelation to him, he would tell his scribes at that very moment to write such and such. That this is what was, it, this is what is being revealed at the moment, and the scribes would write that down. So it is natural. People in that time also, they, they began accusing him of, of being a, a poet. So they said that he's a sha'ir. Sha'ir in Arabic means a poet. But then, they could not convince everyone that the Prophet Muhammad al peace was a poet. 
because everyone knew that he could not you know read nor write so accusing him of being a poet was just absurd it was just senseless so some people thought that well he's a sahir he is a sorcerer he's you know doing black magic and he's just coming with these you know these these messages and these verses from 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 some genie or some some sort of a you know a devil or something like this but then you know they were taken aback that they were taken aback by the fact that the verses of the Quran were speaking about about life about being a good neighbor about being a good husband about being a good child so they thought to themselves you know if this was from uh, some uh, some jinn or some sort of a uh, witchcraft then you know it would not bear such a message so they quickly you know threw that notion away that that the Quran was you know it was coming from some some other some uh, diabolic source and then they decided to say well Muhammad is a kahin or he's a fortune teller but then they realized that the Quran also was speaking against such acts so how could it be fortune telling when this very message is saying that these are all uh, things that are prohibited within within Islam and such actions are, are are disliked by God Almighty so people were then left with no other option than to start reflecting start pondering over these verses because these the verses of the Quran were so deep that even the 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 the, 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 the most elo eloquent uh, poets in that time they were like this can't be the words of a man because they were so eloquent already these poets in the time of the Prophet Muhammad whom he peace they were very very eloquent they're like you know the equivalent of uh, our doctors today doctors in philosophy doctors in, in language etc so when they scrutinize you know and analyze the words of the Quran they realize that no this is something much more than we are thinking it is so gradually people start to reflect on the words of the Quran and they start to enter the fall of Islam because the very first word or the very first verse that was revealed of the Holy Quran was Iqra, was read. Allah Almighty commanded His Prophet to read. He said, Ma'ana biqari. He told the angels that I cannot read. What should I read? Then the angel told him, Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. That God Almighty is commanding you to read in the name of your Lord who has created me. خَلَقَ الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ عَلَقَ He created mankind from alaq. Alaq in, 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 in the Arabic language means a clot of blood. Now, all persons are familiar with science would, would tell you that, you know, when a woman conceives that the very first stage of, of that fetus or the development of the, the, of, of the fetus it, it begins <clears throat> with what looks like a clot of, of, blood, of blood. From there, it, it develops you know, into a, a proper uh, human being. So, these were the first uh, set of information that was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad, whom we peace. And wow, that was amazing. Until today, scientists are baffled. To how, could have, how could a man who was never formally taught to read nor write you know, put, uh, know such information? It could not have been, you know, from, him, from himself because he never went to, to any formal school. How could he have known that the initial stage of, uh, of development in the womb, uh, in the womb of a, of a woman, it, it looks like a clot of blood. That from the time a woman conceives that, 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 that child to be, you know, First of all, it looks like a clot of blood. How could the Prophet have known this? So this is why, you know, in, in history, many scientists even have become Muslims because they, they, they have realized that 
this Quran, the, inf the, the, inf and the information it contains is not from a human source. It is from divine source. It is of a divine source. So, the Quran, this is, this is the first stage in the Quran being revealed. Now, a lot of people think that, you know, the Quran, and this is just a translation. If you look at this, this is just the translation of the Quran. It says the Holy Quran. But this is actually just a translation. Translated by Abdullah Yusuf Ali. This is one of the famous uh, translators of the Quran. Now, when we speak about the Quran as Muslims, we refer to the text that is in the Arabic language. Now, this, is, this, this would be uh, considered a translation of the Quran. So the original form or the original format of the Quran is in the Arabic language. Now, why the Arabic language? Why, why do we not consider uh, the Quran in, uh, in Spanish as being the Quran? Rather, it's just a translation of the Quran. Because God Almighty chose the Arabic language as a means of preserving the Quran. See, many scriptures that came before were altered and were changed by men. That some scripture, scriptures have ended up so corrupt and so uh, distorted that the whims of people have been entered into those holy scriptures. So what we find is that what God made uh, forbidden, those things are now lawful. Why? Because men came and they put their own desires, their own whims and their own fancies and included it in, included it in the book of uh, God Almighty and they produced it as the book of, of God Almighty. Or these are the words of God Almighty. This is what they say. This is why the, the, the Holy Quran also condemns such actions, you know, in, in, in chapter 2 of the Holy Quran, Allah Almighty says, فَوَيْلٌ لِلَّذِينَ يَكْتُبُونَ الْكِتَابَ بِأَيْدِيهِمْ At woe be unto those who write the book with their own hands. ثُمَّ يَقُلُونَ هَذَا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ Then they say that this is from God Almighty. Then they say, this is from God Almighty. So many scriptures have been corrupted like that, and people have put their own words, they have included their own, their own thoughts, their own philosophies, and they have called it the book of God. So when you delve, delve into it, you see so many things that are ungodly. This is because it is, you know, it is not of God. So to avoid that, God Almighty revealed the Quran in the Arabic language. And today, the Quran in the Arabic language is the same as it was when the Prophet and Holy Peace received it. Not a single change. Just uh, sometime last year, a few months ago, actually, the, 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 there was a headline on BBC that a, a, a part of the Quran or some, some verses of the Quran were found. And it dates back to the 5th century uh, Hijri or the Islamic calendar. Meaning it is, it is so old that it is believed to have been, been written just the same time when the Prophet on whom be peace passed away, within that same time. So, that actually, that, 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 uh, that, that record of the Quran actually proves that the Quran is unchanged. Because when they compared the verses that were written on that uh, scroll to what it is today in, in, in the modern day Quran, it was found to be the exact same thing. It was exactly the same. So the Quran is unchanged. It is the only scripture that is memorized, that is committed to memory from cover to cover. It is amazing. The Quran is the only book, the only scripture in the history of all books and, and, and scriptures that a person can memorize word for word, from cover to cover. There are millions of people, millions of Muslims who have done it, who have memorized the Quran. So when the Prophet on whom be peace received the revelation from the angel, he memorized it. 
it was committed to memory, and then it was passed on to the, uh, to the scribes who then recorded, who then, uh, wrote it on paper, or actually, in, in those days, they weren't actual paper, but they, they used to use leather as a means of recording information. Uh, there were also types of, uh, of, uh, of cloth materials that, that they would use to write on. So the Prophet Muhammad peace, he memorized the revelation that was given to him by the angel from God Almighty. And then he passed it on to his companions or his disciples who, who he had specific scribes. Scribes who were very well versed in, in calligraphy. So this is the exact way in, in which the Quran reached us today. That from generation to generation, the Quran was memorized. And people sent their kids to, uh, to, to, to Quran schools who memorized the Quran. And then from, from, from that first generation of, uh, of Muslims until today, we have so many people who have memorized the Quran. Now, the Quran was not revealed in just one, one session or a book that was just, it was just handed over to the Prophet Muhammad peace. No. So how was the Quran revealed? The Quran was revealed over a period of 23 years. See, a lot of people don't, don't, don't know this. They open the Quran and they read a verse and they think, well, you know, this is so... You know, this verse is speaking about, about war or it's speaking about, uh, it's, it's speaking about uh, a woman or it's speaking about children. You know, how, how could everything just come down and how could God Almighty just give everything at once? And, you know, how could this be that we should live our lives, you know, in, in, in just uh, in such a, a random manner or such an abrupt manner? No, the Quran was revealed over a period of 23 years and verses were revealed as needed. So for example, the people asked, the people in the time of the Prophet Muhammad al Humi peace, they asked him about, uh, about having sexual intercourse with a woman when she is in her menstrual cycle. There were persons who went to the Prophet and they asked him this. That is it permissible for a man to have sexual intercourse with a woman during her menstrual cycle? So the Prophet Muhammad peace, he could not just open his mouth and say, well, yes or no, or give an explanation because he was not speaking of his own. He could not tell the people anything of his, of his own. He had to wait on a revelation from God Almighty regarding this. So when, the, when persons came asking him, about such a ruling, the angel Jibril, angel Gabriel, he was sent by God Almighty with the revelation, with the revelation dealing with this specific question. So the revelation then answered that question. So for example, in the Holy Quran in chapter 2, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty says, yes, alunaka anil mahid, that they ask you regarding menstruation. Uh, in other words, having sexual intercourse during the menses. Allah Almighty told the Prophet, Say, O Muhammad, tell your followers, tell mankind, huwa adhan. It is an unclean act. Then stay away from women, meaning do not engage in sexual intercourse with a woman when she is experiencing her menstrual cycle. So like this, the Qur'an was revealed. It wasn't just revealed all at once. No, it was a, you know, a realistic approach towards life. So verses were revealed as needed. As time went by, different things happened. Uh, the people were having various challenges. Verses would be revealed, telling them to either do such or don't do such over a period of 23 years. So the Qur'an is not just a revelation that, was, that is impractical and that was just handed over to mankind. No, it, it, was, it was based upon the experiences of people, what they were uh, challenged with, what situations they were living in. You know, there were wars. They, 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 they had to, you know, 
uh, go through their daily lives doing businesses, having families, etc., etc. So every aspect of life was dealt with over a period of 23 years when God Almighty revealed for every topic or every aspect of life, He revealed verses. So the Quran, therefore, deals with every aspect of human life. So this is why, my dear friends, this is just a, you know, a brief explanation of, of the history of the Qur'an and, 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 and the contents of the Qur'an. I pray and hope that you know, we will get more opportunities to interact one-on-one -on -one or come by the mosque in groups, whatever. Come down, let us sit down and discuss these things. You know, on, on air, it's not so easy for us to discuss every aspect of the Qur'an because we are always you know, going against time. We, we always have to you know, try to put everything in a nutshell. So, my dear friends, I encourage you to come out and learn more about the Qur'an. The whole Qur'an is nas. It is a guidance for mankind. So, come out and find out for yourself how you can achieve and attain guidance through the Qur'an. May the peace, mercy, and blessings of God Almighty be with you until we meet again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Oh, 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 oh,